So in this first video, we're going to be looking at how you can get started with testing in Go. Now, the first question we should ask is why do we test? Well, this might seem like a simple question to answer, but it's good to reaffirm the exact reasons as to why we test before we go down the wrong path and start developing tests that don't provide us any real value. Now, when we write tests, the primary goal is to validate that our application will work as intended when users start consuming that or using that application. Now, as developers, we also want to ensure that we don't have any mistakes in our logic and tests are a good way to validate that. And finally, we also want to ensure that new changes don't break existing code. Now, imagine you were developing a new feature and you wanted to use uh, some old methods that you had to refactor. If you have tests around those methods, then you can somewhat validate that when you push your new changes live into production, they won't break other parts of your application. Now, testing doesn't just exist within software. If you've been following the news recently, you'll have noticed that SpaceX have been testing their rockets, or more specifically, they've been testing their Starship. And in this latest version, which you can see in the GIF here, this was their SN8 version. Now, from this test, they were able to get a heap of data and they were able to improve the design of their rockets so that the next time that they fly, it will hopefully look something a little bit more like the Falcon Heavy launches. So what type of tests can we use to test our Go applications? Well, the three most common are unit tests, integration tests, and end-to-end -end tests. And we're going to be covering each of these in their own separate videos within this course. Now, we're also going to be covering some of the less well-known testing strategies, but we'll get into that further down the line. But for now, let's dive in to Visual Studio Code and start creating some basic tests. So I've opened up Visual Studio Code, and as you can see, I've already got a simple Go project already open. Now within this, we've only got one directory and one file, and in that file, we are, have defined the calculator package. Now, the one function that we have in this is calculate as Armstrong. Now what this does is it takes in a three digit number N and returns true if it is an Armstrong number. Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Armstrong numbers, an Armstrong number is for example, the likes of 371. So we take the first digit, 3 to the power of 3, add that to the second digit, 7 to the power of 3, and add that to the third digit, 1 to the power of 3. And this summation should equal the original number. So let's consider how we would test this function. Now, the first thing we'd want to do is to create a new file within the package, and we call this calculator, and then we'd append underscore test.go to the name of this file. And then at the top of this file, we would then define a new package called calculator underscore test. And then within this, we could start importing the testing package. Now, I'm going to open up this side by side just so that we can see both at the same time. And I'm going to close this. Now, this is the name of the function that we're going to be testing. So the standard practice is to create a func prepended with the words test and the name of the function. So calculate, calculate is Armstrong. And then this takes in a pointer to testing.t, like so. Now, as we haven't implemented it, I'm just going to do t.fail for now. Now, if we were to run this test, we could go into the terminal and we could run go test dot slash dot dot dot. And that would run every test within our package. And as you can see now, it's failing as we expect it to. And you can actually see from the output that it's tried to run the test calculate as Armstrong function here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to define a test case struct. And this is going to have three fields. So it's going to be value, which is of type int. It's going to have the expected outcome, which will be a bool and I'll have the actual outcome, which again, I'll be type bool. I'm going to save this, and within the body of the test calculate as Armstrong function, I'm going to do the following. So I'm going to define test case, and test case, and then I'm going to say the value that we're going to pass into this test case is 371, and we expect this to return. Uh, so expected true, like so. Now, the next thing we want to do below this is to do the following. So we want to do test case dot actual, 
and we're going to set this to equal the calculator package and calculate is Armstrong and then passing in the test case dot value like so. Uh, we don't need this for now so I'm going to make this slightly bigger and at the top we're going to have to import this calculator package so through that I'm going to do the following so github.com and I've initialized this under tutorial edge slash go testing bible and then the, pack, the package name is calculator like so. Perfect. Now we've got the expected value, we've got the actual value that this function now returns. We then need to do a comparison and say look if test case actual does not equal the test case expected then we need to fail this test. Now we can save that and we can come once again down into the terminal and we can run go test dot slash dot 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 and as you can see everything has worked as intended and we can get a wee bit more verbose with the output by running dash v and we can see that it's attempted to run the test calculate as armstrong function and this test calculate as armstrong function has passed successfully. So this is an example of a positive test case that we've implemented here. The next thing we need to do is to also um, guarantee or test that the negative tests work as well. So I'm going to create another test function called test negative calculate is Armstrong. Again, I'm going to pass in the pointer to testing.t and then I'm going to copy and paste this up here, take it down into this function and then I'm going to change the value to a non Armstrong number, like an, an, a number that I know is not an Armstrong number. And then I'm going to change expected to false. So we've tested to see that this will return true for our 371, which we know is an Armstrong number. We now need to take a non Armstrong number and test that it returns false. Okay, let's run the test suites again. Go test dot slash dot dot dot. Everything looks good. Let's get a more verbose output by doing go test dot slash dot 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 minus v and as you can see it's ran both of our unit tests and both of them have passed. Awesome. So in this video we've been able to successfully validate to some degree that our application is working as intended. This has given us a minimum level of confidence that if we need to make changes to our code and our test work we haven't inadvertently broken our application. Now throughout the rest of this course I'm going to be enabling you to write better tests by showing you a number of different testing strategies that you can employ when it comes to testing your own applications. In the next tutorial we're going to be taking this example a step further and we're going to be looking at how we can incorporate subtests into our testing.